Hello and welcome to episode 71 of the Let's Talk Thyroid podcast. I'm Annabelle Bateman and today I'm chatting with Becky all about her fairly new thyroid journey. One of the things I love to do from time to time on the podcast is get you just the normal everyday person living and managing with their thyroid health to come on and share their story. And one of the things I love when I connected with Becky, which was really through this podcast and then through my Let's Talk Thyroid community on Facebook, was how she's approached going gluten-free and how that fit in the context of her family where food equals love. You're going to, you are going to love her warmth and also her approach to managing her own health. Because she's a kindergarten teacher, she's applied some of the ways that she knows to both learn and teach into her thyroid health. You, you, you're going to really enjoy this conversation. There's lots of very practical um, advice. She's, as I said, new in the thyroid journey, and that means that everything is fresh. It, she's walking her talk. She's exploring different options. So whether, whether you've had really a thyroid condition for a short period of time or a longer period of time, I know you're going to get uh, some benefit out of listening to this conversation, which I found deeply encouraging, and I hope you do too. All right. Well, welcome, Becky, to the Let's Talk Thyroid podcast all the way from California. So, yeah, welcome. I'm very excited to be here. I'm really excited to talk with you. So I've been looking forward to this all weekend. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, I've been looking forward to it, too, because, I um, well, we'll come to how this came about in a minute. But I'm just wondering, do you want just to set the scene a little bit, you know, do you want to you live in the States. Can you want to tell us just a little bit, whatever you're comfortable telling about oh, yeah. who you are, where you live, what you do? Yeah. No. A bit of um, context. I live in Northern California and um, I uh, grew up here. Um, in fact, actually just in like a month or so, my husband and I are going to be moving to Colorado. So um, I really appreciated the podcast that you had on stress because I've revisited that one a couple of times. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's a big move. Well, moving house is one of those big stresses. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's see. I, uh, I'm a kindergarten teacher. I've been a kindergarten teacher for a couple of years. I love it. Mm. Um, and, uh, let's see, I'm, I come from a huge family. I'm one of Oh gosh, I'm one of nine kids. So there's Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> that is a big family. It's huge. Wow. Family, really big family. I've got probably close to 30, 40 nieces and nephews now. Oh, so, wow. Um so when I say that family is a really kind of a big deal, like it's really a big big deal and that'll come into play as we talk about things my thyroid journey later, mm. um which is why I bring it up now, but um and we've all we're all pretty close. Um, there's, I've got three sisters and five brothers and, um, they live, half of them live down in Arizona. The other half are pretty much here in California with, uh, up here in Northern California with my mom. And where do you fit into the nine? I'm number eight. So I have seven okay. older siblings and one younger sister. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that is a big family. And, um, Okay, so is your husband from a big family too? No, actually. Well, I mean, I guess at all, in comparison, I would say no. But um, <laughs> yeah. he comes from uh, what I would consider a smaller family. He's got um, two older brothers and an older and a younger sister. So there's five siblings. So he's from a small family of small, five. Small family of five. <laughs> uh, but he's not an only child because that would be a very big culture clash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, good. And have you got kids, um, not, Becky? Not yet. We're hoping. So that's yeah. one of the other reasons why I've really been doing a lot of thyroid research is so. Mm, yep. Yep. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And when you say you're a kindergarten teacher, how how old is kindergarten kids in for the states? Because it might be a bit different in yeah, other parts of the world. The precocious age of five and six years old. So. Uh huh. Yeah. So. So is that the first year of school? Mm hmm. Yeah. So we yeah. get we get them fresh. We get them. Yeah, that's very fresh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's full on. That is full on. Yes, a lot of my kiddos come in and they're like, "Oh, what's this?" I'm like, "That's called a pencil." I'm like, "Oh, a pencil. That's very nice." So, oh I mean, wow, they so, just get really excited yeah. about everything: crayons, pencils, sitting in a chair, having a desk. 
it's <laughs> it's exciting and and a little bit challenging all at the same time because you know we spend probably the first half of the school year teaching them this is how you line up and this is how you raise your hand and this is how we go to the bathroom and this is how we write our name on a piece of paper and how we hold a pencil and this is how we ask friends to play and so yeah yeah yeah, and I think you said in the one of the messages that you know you were busy getting your classroom ready for um, the, the next because you're, you're on holidays at the moment, isn't it? Is that right, right? You're yeah. On a big well, holiday. And, and yeah. actually, we're going. I'm going through this big shift because we're moving to Colorado, and because of the time that we're mm-hmm. moving, so I'm actually when we move to Colorado, I'll be stepping into more substitute teaching until um, ah okay until we kind of nail down a little bit more where exactly we're going to be permanently because my husband's in construction. And so, um, we'll be moving into a small apartment and then he's currently got two different projects that he's working on. So we might end up moving closer to another one. So once we kind of get that figured out, then I'll start looking around a little bit more for uh, full-time teaching. Uh, that's okay. It might've been, actually, it might've been somebody else that was telling me that. But yes. Um, now is the season yeah. for getting everything ready for the beginning of the school year. So my, my coworkers from my previous school, they're all chatting with me about getting their classroom set up and things like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, yeah, we're stepping into the, uh, we're stepping into the beginning of school here in California. Yeah. Yeah. And so, all right, so Becky, we're here to talk about your (laughs) thyroid story. Uh, So tell us, just tell me, like, what made you think that there was something not going right with your body? Like, you know, go back to the big, I don't know, whatever you consider the beginning. Yeah. (laughs) You know, yeah, Um, where did it start for you? Yeah. So it actually, um, my husband and I haven't been married for very long. Um, In fact, uh, coming up on January will be two years. And yep. yeah, um, and so <laughs> thank you. Um, so anyway, as we were um, like moving into like getting married and and doing all of those things, um, started meeting with doctors again about potential having children and those kinds of things. And um, it all was around uh, like my period health and women's health. And, um, I, mm, I'd always just had horrible menstrual cycles, just absolutely horrible. Um, in fact, uh, I got sent to the emergency room a couple of times because of how heavy things were. Um, and so, um, I had a meeting with my general practitioner, appointment with my general practitioner, and then an appointment with a gynecologist out here um, in California and um, found out that I had uh, a mass down there. Um, And it was very stressful, but to lighten things up, my husband and I affectionately named him Mitchell. So I, it was (laughs) <laughs> a soft size mass that was causing major, mm. major problems. Yeah. And so, um, that became like the focus of everything. And, and then kind of like as a, as a throwaway comment, my, my general practitioner was like, Oh yeah. And, and you have hypothyroid and then just kept on going with, with everything else. And I was like, wait, wait, what go back. You said something a little bit back there. Oh yeah. No, it's, you've got hypothyroid. And, um, so, uh, I was tired all the time. I was struggling to get out of bed, um, struggling to have the energy to keep up with my kindergartners. And then, um, having been sent to the emergency room a couple of times, having to miss school for a couple of days because of those experiences. Um, and then finally, um, just, well, I want to say about a year, two years ago now, uh, with the pandemic, everything is today. Oh, no, <laughs> we've lost two years, haven't we? It's yeah, hard yeah. to know. <laughs> so I think it was probably yeah. about two years ago. Um, it was like right after we got married, um, I had to have surgery. Um, and mm. it was just, it's been a huge adjustment. So, um, yeah, it was kind of uh, an afterthought being told that I had hypothyroid. So, mm. um, and then trying to, trying to adjust to everything. So, so when you say it, was, it sounded like it was an afterthought to the 
doctor. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So did you, did you then consider it just like a bit of an afterthought as well? Because like he hadn't was no, of for me, it, made a deal of it or did you, did it, was that uh, alarm bells for you? It was like, what did you do with that information? For me, um, because my mom, my entire life, my mom had hypothyroid. Um, and I've mm-hmm. seen her health struggles and I didn't want that for myself. Um, and then also, even though it felt like a throwaway comment from my doctor, um, I knew because of different conversations that I'd had with my gynecologist that most of the situations that I was experiencing were because of issues with the thyroid. Um, and so, um, I knew that being exhausted all the time, my heavy periods, uh, and just several other things that I was struggling with, it was all tied to Mm. the thyroid. And so I needed to figure out as much as I could so that I could help change things. So, um, it really did set off big alarm bells for me, even though my, my doctor was like, Oh yeah, you've got hypothyroid and then just kept on going. And I was like, wait, Come back. Wait. Come back. No, so what not. did you do? Did you say, kind of like, hold on, what, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I did, actually. Um, I tried to get more information from my doctor. Um, I tried to get a little bit more information from my gynecologist. Um, and what I found was, uh, and again, because I have anxiety, um, trying to use my strategies to remember the information that they were sharing with me. Um, so I was just like, okay, mm-hmm. I need to repeat back to you what you said to me. And lots of times what would end up happening is, is that they would just keep on talking and just over like fire hose me with information. Um, and so mm-hmm. what I realized was that they were going to have to be more touchstones, meaning that I was going to have to go get my own information and then come back okay. and just double check with them to make sure that like what I was doing wasn't going to hurt me in any kind of a major way. So, yeah. So you, yeah, you realized at that point, you've got to take control over this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you've got to be the master of your own destiny in terms of your, your it, thyroid health. Yeah. I mean, after, which is, yeah, after my last, <clears throat> one of my last appointments in person appointments, um, I just, I told my husband, I can't ever go to an appointment like that by myself again. I need to have oh, either wow. someone else with me or have you on the phone if you're out of town because I just got steamrolled right over and I'm tired of leaving the doctor's office crying because I didn't understand what they were telling me. So, I mean, they're wonderful. They mean really well, but I also know that they have a million patients that they have to meet with and they just don't have the time. And I mean, I know that sometimes, you know, you can be a number, but I'm not a number. I'm me. And so Mm -hmm. I need to remember that when I'm coming in to these appointments, you know, that it's okay to dig your heels in. It's okay to say, this is the information that I need. And if you're not going to give it to me, then I can appreciate that. But that means I have to go to somebody who can give me that information. Yeah. And it (laughs) is hard. I mean, the reality is whilst we do need to advocate for ourselves and we need, you know, all of what you just said, when you're actually in the moment in the surgery, (laughs) you know, you are in, there is a power imbalance and you are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And when your health isn't optimal and, you know, and thyroid health is complex and I, it it takes a long time to really understand. Um, Yeah. It's, I, I wish it wasn't like that, but it just seems that that's so many, the experience of so many thyroid patients. Yeah. Um, it's really sad that it is that way. Yeah. Well, um, and, and that's yeah. one of the things that helps me to have a little bit more empathy, not only for other people going through this process, but also the doctor that's meeting with me <clears throat> is after doing my own research, realizing how little they're actually trained in thyroid health. And so, you know, coming into the doctor, lots of times you're hoping that, okay, this is going to be the magic. They're going to tell me what to do. And, and they're put on the spot of, well, I, I, I had a page and a half in my textbook or, you know, we had one lecture on the thyroid or however much they get. And, 
this is all that I can yeah. tell you and then just kind of keep going. So, yeah, that is the system. <clears throat> and I, I kind of, um, the episode that's well coming out of the time, we're recording now as it's come out in the next couple of days. I'm talking to a, a general practitioner here in Australia who has um, Hashimoto's and mm. we talk a bit about like her experience as a, as a doctor and a patient, you know, and she said, I just treated myself like I would treat every other patient. And then I realized that, Oh, I still think something's wrong, but my blood tests are normal. Um, Oh, it mustn't be my thyroid. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, oh, but I'm, she actually had a sore thyroid. And that was like, she's like, yeah, but oh. I think, so she ran her antibodies and they were through the roof. And so, but she said, I was just, just doing what we're trying, what we're trained to do. Like they're trained to go through a process. And I also um, just interviewed Dr. Eric Balcavage about his new book called The Thyroid Debacle. And in that he's co-written that with Dr. Heli- Kelly Haldeman and she she just same situation like medical doctor ended up with a thyroid problem <laughs> treated herself like she would every other patient and she said actually it's whilst we kind of and i guess as patients we can be a bit down on the doctors <laughs> which and rightly so to a degree but it made me realize that they're just doing their job yeah in the way that they've been trained to do their job right well it's and- just that so the system is broken in a sense yeah right, more than the individual doctors yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I've appreciated more the doctors that have, as I've talked with them, that have treated me more like a patient and less like, a, well, I told you what to do. So if you're not doing it uh-huh. and you're not feeling better, then it's your own fault because clearly you weren't doing what I told you to do. I'm like, but I have been doing what you've told me to do and I'm still not feeling better. So, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so yeah. So I agree with you that it really is a, a systems kind of issue more than anything else. And it's just, it's just yeah. a hard, hard place to be and to, to want to be able to come to somebody for answers and they don't have the answers for you. And it's yeah. just all yeah. around hard. Yeah. <laughs> so you found out as a throwaway comment that you've got high, that you're hypothyroid. <laughs> Had they run antibodies? Do you know if you've got the autoimmune component? I have no idea. So I'm still uh-huh. so new. Um, I got one blood test. Um, They ran one and uh, told me that my iron was really low. Um, And -hmm. then it took me several months to get the information from my doctor that, that my iron was low because of my thyroid. Um, And so then trying to get that taken care of, um, but then never really having my, my tests like explained to me uh, I'm still learning Mm. all of those kinds of things. Um, And so as far as I know, I've not had any of those antibody things. um, Okay. Tested. Yeah. So. um, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Are you able to get like printouts of the blood tests from your, from your doctor? Like, will they give them to you? So they, they've emailed me some things um, and I have to go back and I have to see if I can print print them all out because usually what my doctor has done is given me like the highlights and then Uh she'll like literally highlight, Oh yeah, you're fine here and you're fine here. And this is your iron level. So, um, I'm still really new in this whole journey and like trying to figure out like, okay, what is it that they're measuring for that told them that I have a hypothyroid? What are some other things that even if they're telling me that my numbers are normal, which is actually I'm going through right now, my doctor has told me, oh, no, your numbers are fine. You don't need to have another blood test. And then I've had to come back and say, well, no, actually, I'm struggling in this area, right? Like, I'm still tired all the time. My anxiety is just absolutely through the roof. Um, And I'm struggling with these different symptoms. And then Hmm. having her come back like, yeah, but your numbers are fine. So you're fine. And it just is that cycle, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think it's knowing, and this is part of that being that empowered patient that you're, you know, that you are and you're becoming even more is knowing what all those blood tests are, you know, and, and knowing too. And I think this is the same regardless of where you are in the world, because I've had conversations across different places. And so I think it's the same struggle. Mm-hmm. wherever you are at well at least in UK the states Canada Australia I think probably New Zealand's about the same too 
in that we often, yeah, and if the numbers are right, then they won't, you know, test for the other things. But we can offer to pay for those tests, the extra tests like the antibodies, mm -hmm. for example, the T3, if they won't test T3. And, and then if they still refuse that, there are private labs that you can rec do the blood test. Now, obviously, you've still got to, I guess, ultimately have a doctor that's going to right. <laughs> um, explain them. But I was talking to someone just yesterday who had um, doctor had refused to run antibodies, went to a naturopath, ran the antibodies, and they are in the thousands. Like they're wildly. Oh, my gosh. And I said, I hope you take this to your doctor and say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because. Um, but, no, I think that's part of being empowered is knowing, all right, well, I know from all of my reading and research that I, it, it, it is helpful to know whether you've got the autoimmune component or not. Yeah. And, okay, well, if they're not, then I'm going to find some places where I can get that done. Yeah. And, um, but as you say, like this is a process and you're still like early on in the process. So yeah. you don't have to do it all at once. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. So you started becoming empowered, like started doing your own reading research. Where did you go? Like what, what, what's been helpful for you so far? So I'm a ferocious reader. <clears throat> I love to read. Um, I love podcasts. And so um, I... I did a quick search um, looking for thyroid books, looking for thyroid podcasts. Yours was the first podcast, one of the first podcasts that popped up. And um, I started listening and um, it just, it made a lot of sense. Um, and so one of the things that I appreciated about your podcast was that you had so many different experts and things come on in different uh, areas. And so, um, a little while ago, you had um, the hypothyroid chef come on. And so I went yeah. and uh, got involved in her program. Um, and then, um, like, really just went looking for um, audiobooks, books that I could read that could give me more information. Um, and what I found in the beginning and why I really started turning more towards podcasts was I was still so new that um, reading some of the books, it was hard to retain all of the information um, to remember, like, okay, you know, they keep saying T3 and T4 and, and reverse T3. And what was this one? And how does it connect to that one? And, you know, and I, sometimes it almost felt like I was back in my college classes, you know, I get out my, my oh, candy, yeah. <laughs> highlighting, <Yeah. laughs> taking notes and things. Yeah. Um, and so um, being a, a kindergarten teacher, right, recognizing that the best thing that I could do for myself was to start at the very basics and just, you know, don't assume that I know anything and, and come in um, like completely ready to learn um, and starting with, with bite-sized pieces. And so that's really one of the reasons why I ended up turning towards uh, like podcasts specifically for, I, I was looking for <laughs> thyroid for beginners. So, <laughs> and that's mm, what I did yep. a search for. And, um, this yep. was one of the first that popped up and I'd actually, um, I'd actually just come back from Australia. Um, my, ah. friend, I, yeah, my friends and I went on a, a trip before the pandemic hit the summer before pandemic. Ah. And we just had an absolutely delightful time. And so when I saw yours, I'm like, and she's from Australia. <laughs> I'm listening to that podcast. <laughs> so, oh, that's good. Well, that look, that's really lovely feedback too, because I guess that's my heart for the podcast is that, you know, I, look, there's a variety of guests and, you know, and episodes and some are more complex than others. And that's okay because people are listening at all different mm -hmm. points in the journey, but I do really want it to be accessible for people in that early, you know, in the early stages. And, and that's definitely like who I wrote my book for. Yeah. It's my book is not complicated <laughs> yeah, and I'm not medically qualified, you know? And so I think the, the basic, the thyroid basic sort of section of the book is pretty basic. Mm -hmm. Like, and so then plenty of other thyroid books have written about the thyroid physiology in, 
in much better you know detail but i've just you know i've just got the basics and then well here's all the stuff that you can actually do to help (laughs) Um, because i think i've read lots of thyroid books too and and learnt lots and you know i think if from any sort of book if you can just take away one thing then that's been worth you know yeah worth it yeah um but yeah it's just i think we, it's it's complex, so we need to try to make it simple, or otherwise it's too overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and and yeah. one of my tricks was actually because again, as I, I I've taught upper grades as well as kindergarten, so third grade, fifth grade, um, and here in the states, third grade is I think you're about eight years old, fifth grade you're about mm-hmm. ten years old. Um, and yeah. so one of the things that I told my my older students was if you can teach it to somebody else then you're really starting to master the information. Mm -hmm. And so um, I turned to my huge family and I was like, all right, who's going to be the lucky one that's going to learn about thyroid stuff with me? Yay. (laughs) And so Uh, the sisters would probably be a good start. (laughs) And the mom. They were exactly. (laughs) So, and I just, I grabbed my mom and I said, okay, as the only other known hypothyroid uh, club member, you, you automatically get to be um, the person that I'm going to talk to. And whether you choose to listen to what I have to say or, or do whatever I'm doing, that is entirely up to you. But I need somebody to talk to that has had similar experiences. And so I'm and, – and my mom has thoroughly enjoyed it. So, like, I'll come back to her and be like, oh, I just listened to this podcast or I just read this thing and, and this is what I'm doing and – and um, one of the things I think that my mom has appreciated is she has her entire thyroid journey has basically been that experience of you're fine. Mm. You're fine. And and so she's mm. she stopped. And one of the first thing that she told me when I told her about my hypothyroid diagnosis was she's like, well, I mean, I can't tell any difference when I take my thyroid medicine or when I don't. So I don't, I don't know that I'm going to be a whole lot of help for you. Um, mm. And so I said, mom, that's okay. Right. Like this is really going to be one of those experiences where if there's something to learn, we'll learn it together. And it's never too, you're, you're it's never too late to start learning. Right. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think it's been, it's been um, a connecting experience for my mom and I to mm. talk about these kinds of things. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And your other sisters, have you talked to them about maybe getting tested? I have <laughs> actually. Yeah. Um, mm. And so um, my younger sister uh, specifically, she's come and she's asked me a whole bunch of questions um, and she's gone back and she's, uh, she's had blood work done. Um, and her general practitioner basically told her, Oh, nope, your numbers are fine. But she has a lot of the same symptoms that I have. And so Mm -hmm. I told her, I said, not, not to pressure you into doing anything, but the more information you have, the better you're able to make uh, a choice for yourself. Um, and just because they've run blood work on you doesn't mean that you're not hypo, right? Just because they've because, and I told her, I said, one of the things that I've learned is that oftentimes general practitioners, when they run blood work, they, their field of their scope is, is like this. And really with your thyroid stuff, it could cover a field like this. So you could be having an issue over here, but because they're only measuring right here, they're never going to grab it. So, and so that's something that she's really been, um, she's taken to heart. Uh, and so she's hoping to be able to go and meet with a natural path or, um, another doctor, mm-hmm. um, to have a more yeah. extensive blood, blood work done because like my sisters will complain yeah. about stuff. I'm like, you know, that kind of <laughs> sounds like, not that I'm recruiting members for the hypothyroid club, but that kind of sounds like you, you might mm. have some, some, uh, you start to like, see it everywhere. That's <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know not everyone has a thyroid problem, but so that's my my danger too. Is like, hmm, have you had your thyroid tested? Yes. <laughs> uh, but but I I mean I in my family I mean I, I was diagnosed at twenty two, but my mum was only diagnosed a couple of years ago, and so obviously we've got that 
yeah, that because it does often tend to, you know, collect in families. And so my sister went and got um, tested. I said, you make sure they test the antibodies and you make sure like, yes. I gave us a list of these are the things you've got to test for. And she did and she was fine. So it was great, but, you know, just keep an eye, you know, maybe every couple of years go. Exactly. Um, because, yeah, better to know. Like, great, you don't have it. Fantastic, <laughs> but better to know. Exactly. But the other thing that I think, and I, we're about to come into some of these, you know, changes and things that you've been making is that, even if you can't afford the blood test and even if your doctor is, um, you know, or has run some tests and said it's all fine but, you know, you're not feeling fine, I think the good news is that the diet and lifestyle changes that we can make, yes. you can make regardless. And, you know, hopefully then you'll feel better and it doesn't matter if, you know, on one level then it doesn't matter if you haven't had the tests or the doctor says there's nothing wrong, if you make those changes and you feel better, well, ultimately isn't that what we're really after? Like, exactly. And so that's, well, it's not, I shouldn't say it's free, but it's not, it doesn't really cost you to listen to some podcasts and, you know, it doesn't cost much to buy, you know, a couple of books or, you know, um, yeah. or just one good one called Let's Talk Thyroid. Exactly. <laughs> um, but listen, or listen, just listen to the podcast. It's costing you your time and some implementing things, but it doesn't, it's not expensive therapy in that sense. So, yeah, no, exactly. um, yeah. So Becky, we kind of connected because obviously you found the podcast, yeah. you joined my Facebook group. I sent you just a little hi, welcome to the Facebook group message. And we had a couple of little back and forth. And one of the things you said was, um, all right, I think I might have to make some dietary changes, but I come from this big Italian family with recipes handed down from generation to generation. How do I possibly do that? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I read that. I'm like, oh, that's tough. But you can. And, oh, and is it really important, I think, was one of the questions. I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> worth giving a go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then you went and listened to a couple of the specific podcast episodes on that and then completely, you know, yeah, a couple of months. That was back in May. I checked. That was back in May. And then, you know, a week or two ago, you sent me another message with another question about exercise, which we'll come back to that. But, you know, I got asking about the, the gluten-free and you told me this beautiful story about how you'd been making those changes. So I'm going, I cried when I read your, mm -hmm. I, I read your message out to my husband. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm getting there. I did my podcast. It's such a beautiful story. <laughs> so um, I really, I did. I was reading it out and I was just, Close, I'm crying. So tell me about, like, you know, you decided to make some changes towards dietary changes. Tell us about that and how that's been for you. Um, it has been a journey. Um, it, it has been wonderful and hard. Um, and so really kind of what ended up happening was um, after my husband and I were married um, and after I went through the surgery and things, um, I just, I, I started gaining weight, like, like I was just blowing up like a balloon. Like if you've ever seen the, the Charlie and the chocolate factory, right? Like the, <laughs> yeah. I chewed the gum the umpa -umpa, I was yeah. turning into a blueberry. Yeah. And, um, I, I was just, I was tired all the time. I, I was just really, really struggling. Um, and, uh, I'd gone to my doctor and I was like, look, I'm, I'm taking the medicine. I'm, I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm still struggling with these things. And, um, you know, and, and I'm not, I'm not built very big. Um, so, uh, I've always had kind of some issues with digestion things and, um, and things weren't, they just weren't moving the way that they were supposed to. And having to take the amount of iron that I was now having to take, it was just mm -hmm. getting painful. And I was getting into yeah. this cycle of, of, okay, well take the iron supplements and then take the laxatives and then take the iron supplement mm. and then take the laxative. Oh yeah. And I'm wow. like, it's not yeah. working. And on mm. the label, it says yeah. that I shouldn't be doing this. And my doctor's like, no, you'll be mm -hmm. fine. And I'm like, but really, really, will I be okay? And, mm. um, and by this point I had already talked to my, my family and I was like, look, this is my, my new membership card in my, in my new club of hypothyroid. And you all get to now be vicarious members of this club through me. And, and I'm going to talk to you about this stuff and whether you choose to listen or not is entirely up to you. But, um, my amazing sister-in-law, um, one of my amazing sister-in-law, she is currently studying bio super fancy term and I can't remember what it is, but, um, 
And she's known me since I was 14, 13, uh, and I'm 40 now. Um, and so uh, she got talking to me about, because I had reached out to her because I started telling her about how I, even though I was taking all the medicine, even though I was taking the iron supplements, I would drive home from work and I'd have to take a small little nap in my car before I could get out and go back to my house. Right. Because I was just so tired and Mm. um, I was getting worried because I couldn't, not that I, not that I eat a ton of sugar. um, But even, I mean, as a kindergarten teacher, it's just everywhere. There's sugar season is what I call it. And it starts in October and it goes clear the way through it through April where there's just constant, constant sugar everywhere, candy, baked Mm -hmm. goods, cookies, all the things. And, um, you know, even if I had one small little piece, I just, I felt sick to my stomach. And so I just started avoiding all of these different foods. And, um, Anyway, my sister-in-law, she's like, oh, well, you need to start maybe considering taking some magnesium. Um, anyway, so, sorry, this is kind of like <laughs> going a little bit in circles. Um, anyway, so what I'm trying to say is I started reaching out to my family a little bit more about some of these different situations. Um, and my family... Um, really started supporting me in these different areas. And then when things still weren't getting completely better, um, and I still was having weight issues and just really struggling. Um, I, I reached out to you and I asked about the, um, the gluten being gluten free. And then when I got that answer, I was like, okay, well I need to really start looking into it a little bit more. And, um, and I did, And I sat down with my husband and I I just said, I'm having these different struggles and I've been really appreciative of what my family has been able to support me with. Um, And I I think that I need to go gluten-free, but I don't think that I can do it on my own because in my family, um, food is equal to love. And when we love you, we will feed you and we will feed you very, very well. And we love carbs. Carbs are our favorite things. And, um, and so I just, I told my husband, I said, I'm a little bit nervous about going gluten-free, um, because I know that I've got this great support in my sister-in-law. Um, but I'm afraid that my family won't understand and that they'll want to continue to love me with carbs that they'll carve me to death. And my husband was really sweet and he just was like, well, you know, we're in this to win this. So I will do it with you. And I knew that he was on board when, um, he was out of town and he did a grocery drop for me through Amazon and I opened it up and he had found my favorite brand of chocolate chip cookies, gluten free. And I just stood there (laughs) at the counter and just cried. Um, and, and it was, it was a little bit hard because having to remind my family, like, you know, I can't, I love you, but I, and I can't have that. I love you. And I can't Mm -hmm. do this. And, um, I knew that it had started to sink in when, um, I was going down to Arizona, uh, to visit family for some family functions and, my husband wasn't able to come with me because of work. And I just, I told him, I said, I'm a little bit nervous about going down there because something else that I struggle with is just really bad migraines. And, um, if I don't eat well, then I get migraines really bad. And I told him, I said, I'm, I'm concerned that my family is going to love me into a migraine. And, um, so we talked about, what we could, what I could do while I was down there and who had been helping me and understanding things a little bit more than others. And we talked about some strategies, um, that I could put into place while I was down there. And, um, we talked about my oldest sister. She had been also, in addition to my sister-in-law, she'd also been pretty receptive to, um, the whole gluten-free thing. And so we decided that while I was down in Arizona, I would stay with her 
and that I would be prepared to go grocery shopping, get all my own things, um, so that that burden of feeding me wouldn't be on them, and that I wouldn't have anxiety spikes trying to trust my family to feed me food that I knew that I could have. And when I got down to Arizona and I talked to my sister, she just looked at me and, and she says, sorry, now I'm going to get emotional. She says, Beck, we've got food in the fridge. I, I went to the grocery store. Like you don't have to worry about it. And, um, and that was what it was like the entire trip. I kept offering when I mm-hmm. go to visit my other siblings house houses, they'd be like, Oh no, like we got, we got this for you. So we yeah. did some reading. We listened to what you said and here are some things. And I was so appreciative of my yeah, wow. stepping up like that. And then even when I came back to California, um, it I almost felt like it had turned into a little bit of a game. Like who can find the most gluten-free things to tell Becky about? And so I would get, <laughs> That they're all see they're loving you into health. Exactly. <laughs> they're not loving you into a migraine. They're yeah. loving you into full health. Exactly. Yeah. And so I would get um, picture text messages from my sisters. Oh, I was at Costco, and here here's this uh, brand of something that's gluten free, or, or or you know here's a recipe that I found on my favorite mm. food blog that's gluten free, and um, and so it's been really. Um, really helpful, um, to have Mm. my family support with this one. So, yeah. 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 Well, and particularly, as you said, big family surrounded by food, but what, it? but you approached it. It sounds like in such a beautiful way to them too, you know, um, you weren't imposing in that sense or demanding from them, you know, and obviously they're your your family and they love you. Um, and they want to, yeah, so I, so I think that's beautiful. And the other thing that you said to me, tell me about, you know, getting rid of some of the gluten, the gluten-filled products in your home. So how how have you done that? Because that can be tricky. Um, that was a little bit challenging because, um, again, uh, food equals love. And um, so for the most part, what my husband and I did was when we decided to go gluten-free, we just kind of went through and started throwing, re-gifting, like giving it back to people like, oh, you know, thank you so much for this five pound bag of flour. And now we're going to give it back to you. Um, (laughs) And, um, but there were some things that, gosh, like my mom had baked me some cookies to like help me feel better because I hadn't been feeling well and, and, and things like that. And I just, I stared at them and I looked at my husband and I was like, I know I can't eat these and I'm okay if they magically disappear from the house, but I, I just can't bring myself to do it. So I know that you don't have any emotional attachment to these cookies. I'm going to go into the family room and I'm going to read a book for 15 minutes. And when I come back, if these are gone, we're just going to assume that they got like sucked up into the ether. And that's kind of the strategy that we had. And um, in addition to that, um, it kind of turned into like a little bit of a joke. Um, But with this idea that food equals love um, in my family, what I ended up doing after like my mom forgot and, and she sent me a couple of things and I I couldn't, I couldn't tell her no. I was just too tired. I couldn't fight that emotional battle. And so I just accepted it, brought it home. And so then I just, I told my husband, I said, look, this is what I'm going to do because I have to get, I have to get a little bit stronger. And I, I appreciate that you're willing to, to take this and, and to take care of it for me. Um, and I want to get to the point where I feel like I can do it. And so I just kind of, <laughs> I like put my hands on, on the cookies or the cake. And I was just like, I'm just going to like suck up all the love that got baked into these cookies. And I'm just going to appreciate and accept all the love. And then, and then I can throw them away. And that's kind of the approach that we've taken. So I've either drained them dry. It's like Mari Kondo meets gluten free. (laughs) I love that. 
Yeah, I think, yeah, I, have, have you done that with the Mari? Do you know what I mean? I do, the, yeah. the sparking joy thing. Yeah. Okay, thank you for all that you've given me. I can now let you go. Exactly. <laughs> like, you can do it for an old pair of jeans. You can do it for a batch of cookies. You can, yeah, yeah you can. Mm. So that's exactly actually where I got the idea from. And um, it's been very helpful. So, mm. but I'm laughing a little bit because back behind this cabinet is a mixture for beignets. And I haven't quite been brave enough to throw that one away. So it's still back there. What? Sorry, what is that? Um, sorry, my dog's barking. No, just, you're fine. Can you just hold on a sec? Mm -hmm. Oh, no worries. Oh, no, like a delivery or something. So anyway, you yeah. stop barking now. So I can edit all <laughs> yeah. that out. But sorry, you were telling me that there's something in the, the cupboard behind you. Yeah. So what I was just, it? I actually just grabbed it. So when, um, just after my husband and I got married, we ended up, um, when Disneyland kind of opened back up for people to come and visit, my husband and I went down um, and just went to downtown Disney and we got this beignet mix. And oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, I, I, I haven't heard of that. I don't okay. Know that so is. it's like, they're like donuts, but better. And they're really, <sighs> really good. And, um, this was obviously before I knew about going gluten free. Um, and so we bought, a box of it and my entire house is gluten-free and this is the last this is the last thing i'm still working on uh -huh. pulling all the love out of this and then finally letting it go so once this one <laughs> once this one is gone then i know that this is something that i can i can keep on keeping on with so yeah yeah but i mean it makes you realize just how stronger whole hold food how food is so connected to our emotions and and just the idea of you know removing a food group or type or <laughs> really a you know a, is on one level it's it's a i mean in a sense it's simple mm -hmm. so, but it's not easy mm -mm. and there is a grieving process associated with it but has, have you felt any different not eating the gluten Oh my goodness. Yes. It's been, it's been amazing. I've gone back and looked at my wedding pictures and I didn't, I didn't see it before, but I see it now. Like my face was a little bit more swollen. I was bigger. Um, and then since cutting out the gluten, um, I've, I've lost, oh gosh, 15, 20 pounds. Um, and oh wow. Yeah. Wow. That's and, great. And, yeah. And, and it, it's been probably closer to 15 pounds, but I just, I, you know, you live with something and you don't realize that it's an issue because you've lived with it until you don't have to live with it anymore. And I didn't realize mm -hmm. how just inflamed my body was and cutting out the gluten. Um, like I just, in a lot of ways, I just, I feel better. Like I can tell that I'm not as swollen. Um, I, everything works better. Um, and, uh, my, my anxiety depression has been a little bit better. Um, but the biggest thing is yeah, wow. been, like, I can see it in my face. My face isn't as swollen. My body isn't as swollen. Um, and it's been, it's been fantastic. It's been fantastic. So I don't wow. really, I don't well, really yeah. miss gluten that much. There, occasionally every now and again, it's like, Oh, but like you said, it's like that fresh loaf of bread, like right when it comes out of the oven or the sourdough bread was my big, but like, even then, you know, my, my health, my health is worth more than how much that bread tastes, right? Like I love how yeah. I feel more than I love how that bread tastes. Yeah. And that, as you say, said before, that's a journey, that's a process, you know, it, and it, you've got to get that feeling. I suppose you've got to experience that to know. I always say when I, I mean, I, I said to you before we started recording, like I sort of gave up gluten about 10 years ago. And so I forget some of the, you know, it, and it was, it was a long time coming. I'd kind of dabbled and I'd go back and I'd dabble and I'd go back and, you know, so but from when I finally did, it was about 10 years ago. Um, and now I've completely forgotten what I was going to say about that. <laughs> Um, it, it, oh, it, so, so, so now I can look at things and I'm not really, you know, generally it, it, I'm not tempted, but it's only because, yeah, I know the benefit. Um, 
And oh, that's actually what I was going to say was I didn't realize that the way I felt after I ate most meals wasn't normal. Mm -hmm. Like I would feel bloated and like that kind of like oh, six months pregnant kind of like raw, really kind of extended belly and, um, and uncomfortable. And I had just thought, uh, well, Annabelle, you're greedy. You just eat too much, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I've realized since that, no, I can eat quite a big meal that doesn't have the things that set my gut off. And yes, I mean, I can feel like I've overeaten sometimes, but I can eat a big meal and not feel like that. That wasn't normal. Mm -hmm. But as you said, I didn't know that wasn't normal. Well, and I was just used to, I spent my entire life like that. Yeah. So, and how sad sometimes it is that like our first reaction is to shame ourselves when we're not feeling well. Well, you, you greedy guts, you're feeling this way because you didn't fill in the blank, right? Instead of saying, you know, yeah. I'm not feeling well. Why am I not feeling well? And giving ourselves the permission to ask that question instead of immediately going into shaming ourselves. Oh, well. Hmm. But, you know, I don't know if you, what you think about this, Becky, but I think some of it is that we don't know that we don't feel well. Yes, that's Because we've actually never felt good. Like if we, I think it's different. Like if you've felt really great, something's happened, you know, but for me growing up, like I think for me, I'd say my Hashimoto's was triggered at, at puberty, mm -hmm. but it was picked up when I was 22. I don't have any great memories as a little kid of how I felt when I ate. Yeah. You know? So I feel like really for the bulk of that, my teens, twenties and thirties, I I didn't know that I felt bad because that's how I felt. I didn't have a comparison. Yeah. So it was only when I took those foods out that I was like, oh, right, now I feel good. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of people in the, that probably fit into that category. You kind of, you don't know how good you can feel. That's a good point because actually now that you bring it up, like that's almost exactly what happened to me when it came to my menstrual cycle because I had no idea that what I was going through was abnormal because mm. it had been my menstrual cycle almost from the beginning where it was really long, very heavy, um, and, and I just muscled through because I didn't know any different until – Mm. Until it got to a point where it was really starting to adversely affect my health. And then it was, well, gosh, I wish I had known this sooner. I wish I had known so that I could have asked the question so I could have been feeling better a little bit longer. But yeah, if you don't, I mean, again, going back to something that I tell my students, you know, it's okay if you don't have a question because sometimes you don't know enough to ask the question. So let's get into the learning. And then after we've practiced a little bit if you have questions then mm. we'll jump into them but it's okay if you don't have questions yet because you probably don't know enough to have questions yeah and that was a really good point because you, you you did mention that just before we started recording too that you, you sort of feel like you're at the stage where you're not you're just starting to know maybe what questions to ask mm -hmm. and so yeah I think yeah just keep on <laughs> uh, keep on because yeah we never know until we know. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know until you don't. Yeah. Uh, you well, know. yeah. And then once you know, you can't unknow. So that's the, <laughs> once, once you do know, yeah. it's like, well, you know now. So, uh, uh, Becky, are there, is there anything else that you think, um, and we could probably talk for hours, <laughs> but we won't. Um, are there anything, other things that you're working on right now with your thyroid health or, um, anything that you think that the listeners might want to, you know, know about or would benefit from your experience? Um, so for me right now is I think something that I wish that I had known is, or that I'd started practicing sooner. Maybe that's a better way to phrase it is allowing myself room to learn and to make mistakes without feeling, feeling bad. Um, and what I mean by that is, um, like for example, before I was diagnosed with hypothyroid, I loved exercising. Um, I'd lift weights, um, and I would do all of those things. And then I started to get sick and then I had to put that down. 
And once I started figuring out about my hypothyroid and I started realizing, oh, well, exercise helps. And that's all that I could really find about it. So then I started exercising, but I was exercising with the mindset that I had before. And I was completely just depleting myself. And, and rather than coming into it with this mindset of why is that happening? Maybe something's going on and I should ask more questions. I immediately flipped over into the shame. You're just lazy. You're just having a hard time getting out of bed. And, and it wasn't until I started saying, until I'd heard some podcasts about it or until I'd done some reading and started to realize, oh, maybe there's a connection. Um, and trying to change my, my exercise routine because what I was finding out was like I would go, you know, three, four exercise routine, like really hard. And then I just be completely, completely wiped out. And I guess what I'm trying to say is with that experience, giving myself the grace to feel like I can make mistakes and to not completely beat myself up and, and to, to learn that it's okay. And that it's a learning process right? Like I might not get it right the first time. I probably won't get it right the first time, but I can, I can make some tweaks and try it again and make some tweaks and try it again. And just because I don't have all the information right now, doesn't mean that I'm, I'm going to be this way forever, that I can reach out to people and I can ask questions and I can get the information. Um, and I think that that's really important because again, talking with my mom, um, with her thyroid experience, it was so isolating. And so, you know, mm. like, there's no point in asking questions. There's no point in doing those kinds of things because people either can't give you the information or they're just going to tell you that you were doing something wrong and trying to break that mindset of it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to reach out to people. It's okay to say, Hey, this is my experience. Mm. Is this, is this anything like what you've experienced or, or tell me about yours so that I can learn? Um, because it never would have occurred to me unless I had started asking questions that there was a different way to exercise. Mm. Yeah. Which is why that, um, the whole element of support is really important. Isn't yeah. it? Just that, um, knowing you're not alone, you're not crazy, yeah. you, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not crazy, you know? Yeah. Um, and the more i the more I learn and the more people I talk to, the more I realise, you know, if our thyroid health, and I think by that, like it's just that whole picture of, you know, it's not just what our thyroid gland is doing, it's what that, that whole inflammatory load and like just that if we're not, like if that's not all operating well, well, probably everything else is connected. <laughs> so I think I just got to the point where I'm like, it's all connected, it's all thyroid in some way, mm -hmm. you know, and, and because it is so complex and it does like, you know, it was like I said before, talking to Dr. Eric Volkovich about his book, Thyroid Debacle, and he's all about um, just understanding that actually we can be hypothyroid in our cells and our tissues. It's not just about what's in the bloodstream. It's in individual, you know, tissues and cells. And so you can have hypothyroid symptoms with, and, but yet, what's like, and so this comes back to oh, the man. what's in the bloodstream might seem normal i mean even if it's not optimal it might be normal right. but that doesn't mean that your symptoms aren't hypothyroid symptoms it just means that probably in that particular part of your you know body or that system there's hypothyroidism going on at that cellular level mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and so it's wildly complex and yet you know i think that some of the, we, but if we pair it back and we just like, right, okay, well, what can I do? I can ask questions. Mm -hmm. I can try making a change to my diet. I can try different types of exercise and see what works and be open to, oh, well, hold on a minute now, that wiped me out for three days. Maybe I can try something yeah. else. So, you know, yeah. and so maybe seeing it as an experiment, like we're just an experiment. We're like a sample size of one and <laughs> we all have to experiment what works for you is go not going to be the same as for me. Yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. So. Well, and I think too, giving ourselves permission to ask multiple people, because, you know, if you've gone to your doctor, like I went to my doctor and I asked and I was struggling and realizing that's not the only person that I have to go to for more information, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and giving myself that permission to, to talk to other people to get more info. Um, I mean, and I'm not saying discount what your doctor says because they're an important part of your thyroid support system, but that's just it. They're part of it. They're not the whole system. And it's okay to have other people to go to to get information if you've got a system that's that's supporting you, that's working. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is... Um, like I, I felt in the beginning that if I asked one person and I didn't get the answer, well, then that was it. I couldn't go and I couldn't ask other people. Um, and mm-hmm. now that's been the big thing is it's okay. If I didn't get the answer from this doctor, it's okay if I go to another doctor and I ask them. Or it's okay if I go to to someone who is a hypothyroid, uh, who also has hypothyroid, and I ask them about their experience. Right? It's okay to ask multiple people. So... Yeah. Yeah. And we and I, probably the if we ask lots of people it is helpful because we, all our experiences are slightly different mm-hmm. too. So yeah, it's a bit like I can do the same thing, you know, or or I'll Google or if I I don't know. Um and I'll just say, okay, well if there's some themes here, like if I've kind of Googled a question and I can see across, you know, five or six different people that, you know, know what they're talking about are saying a similar thing. Okay. All right. Well then that is connected or maybe I could try that, but you know, like I'm looking for, everyone doesn't have to say exactly the same thing, but you're kind of looking for, hmm, okay. It's not just one person. There is a bit of a, yeah, Mm -hmm. a bit of a theme or some common, common things. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Well, Becky, thank you so much for sharing what's, you know, like the emerging, you know, your emerging thyroid story with us. And I love actually the way that you kind of related parts of it back to being a kindergarten teacher (laughs) and just the way we learn. And um, that's really helpful. I think that that's obviously been helpful for you, but I think that's helpful for um, probably for other people listening too. And I'm a firm believer that there'll be people listening to this that needed to hear your story. Thank you. And that will benefit from what you've shared in a way that, you know, because yeah, your story is unique and so they'll connect with you. So yeah. thank you. Well, thank you. It's been, it's been an absolute uh, pleasure to chat with you. So, and again, that whole idea of it's okay if you don't know, because you're going to move forward and, and then you'll learn and that's okay. And I think that's been, yeah, one of the, the big things of my, my journey is, leaning into not knowing and trusting that when I ask the questions, eventually I'll get what I need. So, yeah. 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 Well, it takes a lot of courage to share your personal um, health story. And so, you know, I think uh, very um, grateful that you've had that courage to share with us. So thank you. Yeah, My pleasure. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Let's Talk Thyroid. I would love it if you enjoyed it. If you would hit subscribe and the bell, that would be really helpful. Uh, Even more helpful actually would be to share it with someone else who you know has thyroid issues or you think would benefit from listening. That really is part of my mission, I suppose, is to spread the message of positive and practical approach to managing your thyroid health so that people really kind of have more energy to get on with living their life and not just some kind of trudging through each day. So spreading that word really genuinely helps um, other people feel better, live better, be better. Uh, The best way that you can connect with me is through my um, website, which is annabellebateman.com. From there, really, you'll be able to connect in all the other ways. I would love it if you would join my Facebook community group. Um, There's lots of uh, great support there. It's all free. Uh, that and that's you know just being with like-minded people Uh, but from the website you can also book a strategy session with me so if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed not not too sure where to start then um, book a strategy session there's also freebies to download and links to look at my online courses or purchase some essential oils or, or or my cookbook so that's really the hub 
would be annabellebateman.com. But look forward to connecting with you and um, yeah, just being in this thyroid health journey together. Have a great day. Bye. The information presented and discussed in this podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease and should not be used as a substitute for proper advice from a qualified professional. 